Um, we need Michael. I think it's Michael Dinson. That's it. Oh, um, let's see if you take a few of these here. Okay, welcome back to the continuation of the TSVWG Multi-Ring Circus, better known as the second session of the TSVWG Working Group Meeting uh, here in Prague. Um, your uh, chairs are Gory Fairhurst, Wes Eddy, and myself, David Black. Uh, Gory and I are up here. Wes is still back in the, back, back, back in the U.S. somewhere. This is the note well. Um, note it well. It applies to you. And this is the last chair slide uh, for today, unlike, uh, unlike how we started the week. Um, so this is item four, agenda review, after which we're going to bring up, uh, uh, let's see, at least Georg is here uh, from 3GPP to talk about um, a little bit about 5G and how, how it relates to transport. We then have a couple of SCTP drafts. Uh, a couple of FC, FEC update drafts, and Michael Tuxen has an individual draft um, about something that needs to be fixed in the UDP and CAP of SCTP, as he'll, as he'll explain later. Any, anything else, any requests to bash the agenda? Ooh. No, that wasn't, that, that, the chairs will not interpret that as an agenda bashing request. <laughs> Okay. So we can't promise this will be as exciting as Quick was if you were there. <laughs> uh, however, we still need a scribe to dribble text into the etherpad. Could anyone volunteer to put some text in? I can keep an eye on correct. Yeah, okay, but you're Michael, you're, you're also can... speaking. You're 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 about you're you're about half our agenda. So. <laughs> um. Roland, any possibility of doing it? Just a little bit of text. We don't need the blow by blow. We just need we 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 just need a reminder of what we, of, of 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 what we did. Yeah, and I'll happily keep an eye on it. But it worked so well last last meeting with just somebody dribbling text in, and we can fix it, and then we have a meeting note. And Dave, could 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 you also dribble some text in? Okay, oh, perfect. So that's uh, Roland Bless and Dave Dolson. Thank you very much to both of you. Uh, unlike Miri, I don't, I, I don't have little, little, little stickers though. And I, I'll watch um, Jabba. That's fine if we have note takers watching either part. Great. Okay. So there was a very interesting uh, lunchtime session on Tuesday about uh, 5G, 3GPP, and the IETF, uh, and Georg Meyer has been kind enough to come join us to uh, tell us a little bit about uh, so what indications are for transport and how we can work together. Yeah, thank you very much for having me here. I, I have no slides. Sorry for that. Uh, we were just like talking today practically uh, whether I should say something. My message, uh, I hope, is very simple. Um, I, I think the, the whole area here, the uh, the work you're doing is a very positive example for how 3GPP and ITF work together. The work on ECN, I, from my perspective, uh, never was uh, a reason for any controversials or anything like that, and went smoothly. And the input we gave, as well as the input you gave to towards 3GPP, was always welcomed and worked in. So I I have uh, really at that point uh, no clear view on how we 
will progress like what additional topics and additional requests we will have from 3GBP as I already said on Tuesday um, we are still building up the requirements on on the 5G system also on the protocol level um, we got the question during the Q&A um, whether somebody in 3GBP wants to remove ECN from the 5G system um, I had a few talks with a few guys uh, again now. I'm not aware of this. I also did get an I also didn't get an indication that anybody else is immediately aware of that. I think if anybody of you has a concern or knows of any activities on that, uh, as I said, I'm also not a RAN expert, so there might be activities or discussions in RAN that I'm not aware of. Please come to me. We can. Uh, at least then identify much better whom to talk to. I think uh, from the perspective I have, also from what I know from the CT groups, we should go on with the ECN work as it is at the moment. And uh, I don't see any any danger uh, in, in that respect. But as I said, for further work, we, we need to see if something comes up, I will produce a few slides and come to the next meeting or whenever it's time to present uh, issues of interest, or we will have an expert here. Thank you. Spencer? Yeah, I just wanted to thank you for coming and talking to us. It's always appreciated. Thank you. It, it's uh, out of pure self-interest, so. <laughs> 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 but uh, the, the it's. The part where we're working on stuff that people are interested in <laughs> is fascinating to us. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what comes in the end, so. Thank and you wanna, very much. I want to echo Spencer's remarks. You're more than welcome uh, uh, here uh, at any time in the future to talk about uh, th things things that are relevant and move things along considerably faster than we can get them done by by exchanging liaison statements. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank Thanks you a lot. Okay. Next up, we have a couple of SCTP drafts. Let me go get some slides here. And let's see, where's the clicker? Here we go. We even have a slide clicker for you. I hooked it up this time. How does it work? Uh, the, arrow, the forward and back arrows go forward and back. Um, hang on. What happened there? Um, the first one is quick. That's interesting. No signal? No signal. That's not black right. Need a, need a slide black hole detection algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hang on a minute. It was projecting a moment ago. Um, Second screen? Oh, no, 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 no. It, it, it got confused. There we go. We have, a, we have an hourglass over there. And we should now have... All right. Now, if I've done this right, yeah, it's, it it sometimes forgets what, it, what 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 it's supposed to be doing. Okay, so the first document is a working group document uh, regarding um, an SCTP specific way of doing network address translation, and um, I think we have as a deadline the end of the year. Uh, there have been no changes in the document. Uh, what is still being to do is the suggestion to split or to rearrange the content which is there uh, into two parts, one for implementers of NETs and one relevant to implementers of the endpoints, so that if you're only implementing one paid, uh, one part, then you only need, uh, you don't need to read the whole document. And the other, the other one is, uh, I think all the examples we are using there, I are using IPv4 addresses. And, um, you can do the same for IPv6 if you want, but it was a request to show also that you can do a, a translation from v6 to v4 and vice versa. So that will be adding an example or changing the examples. Uh, it will be interesting to fit the v6 addresses into 18 col uh, 80 columns. <laughs> If that's your challenge, then good luck. Um, if there's more imp more challenges for the V6 thing, then I think you need to push back on the on the requirement to do V6. But let, let's try it. Yes. Well, let's try yeah, and fit yeah. it in and see, see what happens. Yep. Oh, you need to change the, yeah. 
so next. Get the, get the next one. So the next one is a bit more interesting. It is a document we have around for uh, some time. It covers um, erratas in RFC 4960, which is the current base spec of SCTP. And um, we have added since the last IETF a couple of issues. So for the document structure is for each issue, we have a separate section describing what has to change in RFC uh, 4960, so it is based basically old text, new text, and it has a textual description what the problem is and what the solution is. So the issues we resolved is first a uh, uh, reduction of the initial RTO. So uh, at the time we were writing RFC 4960, three seconds was the initial value, now it's one second, and we just adopt that. Uh, from TCP, if we are removing an ordering requirement of bundled second error chunks. So it's stated in the document that one chunk has to be before the other in case you receive a data chunk where uh, you don't support that stream. And it doesn't matter which sequence it is, so we just remove that. Um, there was a problem in the um, abstract API, a parameter was used there and not described, so we remove, we remove the parameter because it's not necessary. Um, for uh, WebRTC, um, they wanted, uh, the, the point is that um, they want to change over time the DSCP value and um, you can do that in the socket API but we are missing a statement then when uh, consequences of this change is that you might end up in a different queue, you have to reset the congestion controller so we added a statement regarding that. Um, the ICMP handling, which is described in, in the document, was inconsistent for IPv4 and IPv6. So some IPv4 packets were handled, but some corresponding IPv6 packets weren't. We have removed that. We added text to cover um, the handling of soft errors. So you can now signal um, um, what's called in the host RFC soft errors to the application. Um, we clarified the uh, congestion control, uh, congestion window handling. So it's uh, you can only grow the congestion window if it's fully used in uh, when you, when you when you want to grow the congestion window. And um, since you can't fragment data based on the congestion window, uh, the statement is you can overbook by uh, at least uh, but by at most a packet or a chunk, so that you can always. Um, fully use the congestion window. So if you have two bytes left and the next message is 10 bytes, then you can send 10 bytes. Uh, and the same applies to zero window probing where your window is so small that the next chunk is larger than that and you're allowed to send it to trigger this. Uh, so this has been um, addressed. Uh, we still have remaining issues. We want, uh, and uh, the authors of the document talked about this. Um, during this week, how to resolve them. So there is a CRC32C example code which uses short, long, and int, and we already had a problem where um, <clears throat> on some platforms long as 64-bit or on some platforms long as whatever, and so we, we will go through explicit types where the type states how long this variable is. This covers this stuff. Um, we still have one issue left from 4960. We have um, a hostname parameter where you can, in the init or init act, you can put in a hostname parameter. It's a fully qualified domain name. And um, we, made sh uh, we observed that during all the interrupt tests, this parameter was, this, the support of this parameter never has been successfully tested. So we will deprecate this parameter in, in the BIS document saying that it should not be used anymore, and the supported address parameter will be used that uh, the hostname parameter must not be um, announced, and um, uh, even when it's announced, it, should be, it must be ignored. So this helps uh, in case you have an implementation supporting this stuff, and uh, kernel implementations don't support this parameter, um, and they always protected itself by not announcing this host and parameter type and the supported address types. Um, and the last thing is that um, there are three RFCs currently available updating RFC 4960, and that's RFC 6096, which is uh, adding a chunk flags registry. So we will include that in the BIS document. 
the action by Anna has already been taken, but it's then documented in that uh, thing. Uh, we will um, put a reference to RFC 6335, which updates the IANA registration procedures for the port numbers. And we will include RFC 7053, which adds a bit to uh, the data chunk header, which is implemented by uh, Linux and FreeBSD for a long time. Uh, so we then have a single document specifying the base protocol. And um, that is basically um, what we want to address during, let's say, the next weeks. Um, comments are still welcome. And uh, the overall process for this document is that it's an informational ROC. We want to uh, process, uh, publish as an informational ROC, and it will be the basis of uh, another document, the BIS document of RFC 4960. Uh, so we basically take RFC 4960 and then take the approved uh, diff, apply it, and then run that through uh, the IETF for publication. One of the points Gori wants to well, make. Can you go back one slide just sure. for a second? Which one? That one? Two sides. One side. Um, so these included RFCs. Just to remind everyone, um, what's the standard status of these three documents? Uh, the first and the last are proposed standard, mm -hmm. I um, guess. Uh, I don't know about the middle one. Okay. Um, okay. So, so is there anything new in the list of features nope. um, that have not previously been in the 4960? I mean, apart from those three things. No. Okay. Just checking as we move forward. It's only clarifications. Okay. So, and yes. Okay. And are those three RFCs being included by by referencing them or by copying text? The first one would be copy the text for the chunk flex registry. The last one will be by uh, adding the text for the IBIT where we discuss the stuff, and the middle one will be a reference. Six, three, three, five. Okay. Yeah. No, no, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah. 6335 is the revised IANA procedures for transport yep. protocols. It's BCP. Yeah, it's got, it's got the correct status, and it's a change to the IANA procedures across the whole transport. So that shouldn't yep. be modified by this, but this must then refer to this yep. normatively. And presumably, the 4960 BIS uh, document, when that's all put together, will also refer to 6335. 35 and not copy and text. Okay. Cool. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to copy text there. Okay. Okay. So, and then the last point is once this document, I mean, we will go standard track for that document. And then the point is that at one point of time, um, one might go for standard and not for proposed standard. Was that a question? That was a suggestion. Okay. So, um, if you think this document is ready to go to full standard, the BIS document, no, the, the BIS document, yes, then we have to check with our area director if he's help, if he's happy with this, he'll be helpful. Um, the, the main criteria here is that we don't add new features, correct? Um, but we can change text, we can remove features, we can clarify, and the level to which we do that will be determined exactly by what this feature list is when we present it back to Spencer, I think. Oh, there's the idea. You keep, keep, keep going. What? Keep going. Keep okay. going. Well, I, I'm, I'm saying you don't have to do anything, Spencer, at this moment, because um, we give you this list and we ask you if this list will still be valid for progressing the, stand, progressing the SCTP standard to full standard. And that sounds like a fine plan to me. And I was standing up to agree with you, but I wanted you to stop talking first. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, I think that's um, it. Good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any questions on the whole process? Any comments on the idea that we might be taking the um, revised document to full standard? Anyone think that we're missing something in SCTP and want to throw anything at Michael or buy him a beer later? Michael doesn't drink beer, do you? Exactly. <laughs> it would have been an easy offer. Right, thanks, Michael. You can take the seat. All right.
perfect frame. So while I'm bringing up Vincent's slides, um, I'll give away one of the little secrets to how we managed to run this working group. Um, our AD was impressed in the number of drafts we have. Uh, we assign shepherds early so that we know for each draft who the responsible um, working group chair is. And so for Vincent's two drafts, um, I'm going to be the shepherd. And for the UDP options draft that we've recently adopted, Gory's going to be the shepherd. So Vincent, I think I've got your slides. And let me see if I can get, get them full screen here. OK, thank you for being the shepherd. <laughs> yeah, I will be fast this time because I don't have so much to say about it. Uh, okay. Well, there's a clip. There's, you can invent your own slides. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yes, it's working well. Um, so the first few slides is about uh, about this uh, fact from extension uh, document. Well, I'm skipping this one. Uh, I made a few improvements to the document. Uh, first of all, this is now a working group item document, and I changed a little bit the name of this document. Uh, previously, it, there was this mention V2 uh, that was suggesting that it could be a new version. This is no longer a new version for sure. Oh, I made something wrong. What's on No. This is uh, certainly not a new version. This is just an extension of the same protocol. And I wanted to reflect it in the new uh, document name. So that's the first point. Then we received a few comments, essentially from Marie-José Montpetit, about uh, wordings, and uh, essentially. Uh, so this is the reason why I get rid of this uh, convolutional adjective and removed it and replaced it with a sliding window. So we are discussing an extension for sliding window cuts. And this term sliding window reflects very well the way it's working. So it makes sense really. Um, and then, and this is probably the main change in this document, uh, I have added a new, uh, well, I have uh, added some text to introduce a uh, fake frame the terminology, the concepts, the way it works. So there was already a section three in the previous version, uh, but this section three was just uh, two lines long saying that, okay, there is no uh, change to this section, so please go to ba go back to uh, IFC 63, 63. Uh, uh, and the introduction to this document was more about uh, why do we want to extend this protocol? So there was no way to, uh, and a fake frame to understand what uh, is the concept, what is the architecture so far. So I took advantage of this new version to uh, uh, add a brand new section three, of, uh, section, well, a brand new section three with some introduction, introductory material. So I hope that this time it will be clear that a newcomer to fake frame will be able to understand more easily what it is about, how it works, and uh, some uh, terminology. We will see that probably in the uh, working group plus school. <laughs> so that's all for this first document. Next uh, document is about uh, sliding window RLC fake scheme. So having a new, well, having an extension to fake frame for those codes without any sliding window if his scheme wouldn't be uh, meaningless. This is why we also propose this uh, uh, document. Um, once again, this is a, a working group document now. Once again, we received some uh, meaningful uh, feedbacks from Marie-José. Uh, for the same reason, I get rid of convolutional adjective, replace it with sliding window. I kept there was some discussion at some point of time whether we should change name of this uh, fake scheme with something else well finally i decided to keep rlc but now i make it clear that it is a sliding window uh, rlc fake scheme so i added this sliding window in this uh, extension of the acronym well that's a detail but it can make sense um, then the main change uh, technical change for this document is probably this one uh, I I don't know if it was um, if I forgot to to do that before. Well, I don't remember exactly how it came. But there was no way to have multiple uh, repair symbols per packet previously. So just to uh, clarify a little bit what I'm talking about, uh, there is a 
a way, a mechanism for uh, moving from uh, an application packet, let's say, to make it simple, to symbols that are managed by the FEC uh, codec. Uh, symbols traditionally are much smaller than the uh, application packet, RTP packet, for instance. Uh, there's good, there are good reasons for that, essentially, because uh, application packets can be of variable size, so it makes sense to have smaller symbols, so a big packet will uh, map, will be mapped to a certain number of uh, symbols, a small packet will be mapped to a single, uh, single source symbol. Uh, okay, so there are good reasons for having this mapping, and now if you do that, the consequence is that the repair symbol will also be the size of the source symbol, so if we have small source symbols, we have small size uh, repair symbols. So, uh, and therefore, if you, it, there is an incentive for having, for being able to have multiple repair symbols per repair packet because it makes, uh, it uh, will remove some uh, overhead uh, when transmitting a repair packet. So instead of having multiple uh, packets, you will have only one, only one UDP IP header, only one uh, header for the uh, coding parts. So what I've, what you can see in this figure is uh, the resulting packet that will be in that case composed of three repair symbols and a single header, and of course on top of that a single UDP IP header. There are a few consequences if we want to do that. Uh, essentially the fact that uh, those uh, three repair symbols will be produced by using exactly the same encoding window. Uh, using uh, a repair key, which is a, a seed for the PNG that is easily uh, uh, deductible from the first version, so the first repair key value will be for the first repair symbol and the next two uh, repair symbols will have this value plus one and this value plus two, so it's pretty easy, we can manage this in an implementation very easily, it's not a problem. So that's the main change, it's already in the document. And then uh, there was also another change, uh, there was a section that was so far empty called FEC code specification. This is now uh, uh, completed. And uh, I also added the uh, security considerations and the operational management considerations uh, section. So it's pretty, it's pretty close to the end. Uh, so just, uh, well, what are the next steps for the two internet drafts? I would say that the fake frame extension document is almost done. I have to proof check the whole document, but uh, I think that for next ITF it will be done. Um, the sliding window LC fake scheme document, well, has progressed very well. Uh, of course, I need to proofread it. And uh, I have one or maybe two uh, technical questions. What I'm mentioning here in this uh, slide is one of them. I have to discuss a little bit with colleagues. I have to do a few tests, but uh, well, there is no big question behind. Well, it's uh, the question is, should we take advantage of this document to add some, well, one or two more uh, technical extensions or not? Those the extensions are not very uh, complex. The one I'm mentioning here in this slide is about the possibility of having sparse versions of uh, those uh, equations. So instead of having all non-zero uh, coefficients, being able to have some zero coefficients. So there is a compromise when, okay, it can make sense. I don't want to go too much into details, we can discuss this offline. And the other one is about the finite field size. Uh, should we add one or two additional values? So those are technical questions I'm planning to uh, clarify for next ITF. Otherwise, uh, well, both documents are close to the end, I would say. Questions? Comments? Just a comment. Uh, I'm very pleased to see that uh, Mara Jose uh, has taken a good close look at this and uh, hoping that uh, she'll be willing to take another good close look when we, uh, at Working Group last call time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, I also hope that uh, in the uh, Network Coding Research Group we will have a few more people looking at it more carefully because it really makes we sense. Just ask them. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. I will. <laughs> I already asked them. <laughs> and we'll be happy. I will uh, convince them if there's no volunteer, I would say. Yeah. Uh, Jay Collin, thank you for this work. I'm actually pretty excited to try it out. Is there an implementation? Yes, there is an implementation of both fake frame extension on this uh, RLC uh, fake scheme. Great. This is not open source, but uh, there is an implementation. OK. Thank you. You're welcome. Come and tell us more next time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unless anybody's got any comments? Apart from Jake? Bob. Thank you. Michael, last one. Okay, oops. That document is about um, encapsulating UDP over, gosh, SCDP over UDP. And there is an um, RFC about that. Um, and this document um, provides some considerations. When I'm gone. So, um, it, so what, what is the scope of this document? So the scope is um, to clarify a couple of things which refer to SCDP over UDP over IPv4 or SCDP over UDP over IPv6. So it's really encapsulating SCDP directly over UDP. It does not apply to SCDP over DTLS over UDP over IPv4 or IPv6, which is used by WebRTC. So this is not related to WebRTC. It's only for encapsulating SCDP over UDP to get through legacy nets. Um, <clears throat> the document um, specifies the differences between RC 6951, which is the specification for um, SCDP over UDP, and an upcoming um, BIS document. And one uh, and once this BIS document um, starts as an internet draft, this draft will just die. Um, so, what is the status? Um, it is what is not described in the uh, RFC is how you handle um, um, uh, the, the, it describes the handling of embedded addresses in in uh, init and init act chunks and how you verify these packets so some of the packets you can't verify like the init uh, packet so if you get a packet and you do updates of the of the port number you can't verify the verification tag and that's uh, not clearly specified in the in the base rfc it's it tells you uh, that you have to do this before doing but it doesn't make explicit that you don't do it if you can't do it and what has recently been added is um, a consideration for uh, keeping net state alive. So this means um, that you reduce the heartbeat rate. So SCDP will send um, periodically heartbeats, and the default is 30 seconds, which might be not short enough to keep net states alive for UDP traffic. So the suggestion is to reduce this to 15 seconds when you run this. I see. So what you mean is reduce the heartbeat interval, thereby increasing the rate? Yes, you increase the rate. Yep. And uh, again, this document is then the base of the base document. If there are any comments on this, um, I would be happy to get them. Um, except for that, the document seems to be stable. So make, starting a BIS document seems to make sense. I confirm that this is the approach and we will not adopt this document, but we do consider the adoption of the document that will follow. Yes, that's the plan. So this document is, an, is kept alive as an individual document and it will die. Um, and for those of you who haven't read it, the document it replaces about five pages of content in the, so this is a very small document and it's not worth publishing a separate bit to go with it. We're just going to replace the whole document. Yeah, that was, I mean, that was actually suggested by, by an AD not to have uh, an RFC and a small, a small delta, but just revise the document to have this stuff in a single document. A question? Yeah, Jake Holland. Um, I just had a question. Was the uh, change on the timing to keep NetState alive based on measurements? I'm 
sorry if this was addressed in the in the doc. I haven't read it yet. Sorry. No, it's not based on on, on measurements. It's just I looked up what other protocols do for keep alive packets, and it's about fifteen seconds what they use. And the RFC for S. I mean, right now the RFC says for 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 heartbeats is thirty seconds. Um, and the application can change it anyway. So. An application can, can control this and can do this, but it might make sense to just uh, let the STP stack take care of this in case of UDP and CAPS is used. Great, thank you. You probably should refer to the UDP usage guidelines, which have, I think, the same number. In. OK, I will do that. That would be excellent. That's a good suggestion. Thank you. Any more comments or questions? Our master plan is to try and release you early from the meeting. Is there more we have to discuss? I've got my list here. I don't think so. I think we've got a few reminders and requests, though, to, for, for, for people to think about as they walk out. OK. So since we're releasing you early, maybe we can offer a little bit of homework or interesting reading to before the next IETF to have some discussion on TSV WG list. Number one, um, we're looking for data on the LEPHB candidates on how different diff serve code points might work in real networks. If you're interested in this, please do measurements or please talk about it on the list to help roll and progress that draft. L4S architecture. We'd love people to read this and comment on it. Um, L4S is important probably as we move forward. L4S architecture document is the thing to get right. Um, ECN and CAPS and SHIM have been talked about a lot around the IETF this time. And we said we're doing a working group last call soon. Please read these. And finally, the RFC 4960 errata we just talked about. If you use SCTP, if you're interested in SCTP, if you think you may use SCTP, please read the list of errata because we intend to change the standard a little. OK. And with that, I think we're done. See you in wherever. Where are we going next? Singapore. Well, that might be fun. Join remotely if you're not coming, but please contribute. Halfway around the world. Thank you. I think I saw it. I have to go sometime, yeah. <laughs> Hey, just makes it possible. Yeah. 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 Thank <laughs> you.